Hello YouTube, FedEx has been round and dropped off 10 parcels, 5 large, 5 small. If you want to play the guessing game, pause the video and write in the comments what you think this could be. Raise your bits now! Come on, come on! This is the colour of your money! Come on, come on! Bet, bet, bet! Oh, that's it! Bedingo over! The box is 43 and a half centimeters wide. That's shorter than the other boxes. It's about 30 and a half centimeters tall and just under 22 centimeters deep. The box weighs 4.8 kilos. I'm sure this is lighter than the previous boxes. This welcome letter is in a slightly different format. It says, Dear customer, thank you for purchasing Ant Miner. I'm not going to read all of this. It says there's a quick start guide on the website. Before you power it up, you've got to inspect the hashboard, make sure there's no loose heat sink that could have fallen off during transit. Each hashboard contains three PCIe connectors and you must have all three connected. Each board must be run off the same power supply. Each hashboard consumes 520 watts at 25 degrees Celsius at the maximum hash rate. It's recommended that you use a 1600 watt PSU. If you do connect two or more power supplies to the same hashboard you'll break something if you are using separate power supplies power the hashboard first before you do the controller the recommended environment temperature for the ant miners is 25 to 40 celsius or 77 to 104 fahrenheit with humidity of 5 to 95 percent relative humidity the ant miner uses dhcp to acquire an ip address the default username and password is root the return policy is all sales are final and you won't get a refund there's a 90 day warranty from shipment that's three months i'm sure the l3s were six months you void a warranty if you overclock the miner. You remove parts or components without permission. You can see one of my previous videos on how to get permission to open up the miner. If there's any burn parts on the hashboard or chips or any water damage. If the warranty is void, Bitmain can repair your miner at your own cost. That's parts and labour. The other side tells you how to request an RMA and it lists the Fuck Wok Wong address or the website displays a different address and then you've got some contact details at the bottom. The 400 number is a toll free number if you're using Skype so you can call this for free. In Chinese hours. The internal dimensions of the packaging is 42 centimeters by 28 centimeters by a slim 19 and a half centimeters and you can squeeze it down to 19 centimeters. The weight of the miner including the internal packaging is 4.26 kilos with just the bubble wrap it's 4.1 kilos. This looks smaller than the other ones and if you play along with the game it is an Ant Miner D3 the 19.3 gigahash version. There's fewer fingerprints on here and there's a tiny scratch mark there. It uses a different type of fan and there doesn't appear to be any dust inside when I check both sides. This has three PCIe ports on all three hash boards, so that's nine. The hash board connectors on the other side compared to the L3 and there's a 10th PCIe connector here. There is a fourth hash board connector on the control board so maybe you can build your own monster and add a fourth hash board. The smaller box is 2.4 kilos. It's 32 and a half centimeters long, 17 centimeters wide and just over 12 and a half centimeters high. It's an APW3++ a 1600 watt power supply if you're on the 200 to 240 voltage range. The power supply in the internal packaging weighs 2.1 kilos. The other boxes are the same so I'll just install these ant miners off camera. The hash board on the D3 do not wiggle as much as the L3 Plus did. There's no real way to check if these hash board have jammed across. You could remove the fan and have a peek inside. That's probably the only way. The ant miner wants to take off. When mining, the D3 is consuming 1200 watt, which means my 1000 watt power supply mod isn't really that great. I need to quickly buy some better power supplies. One of the bit main power supplies is dead. I'm getting between 4 and 5 watts. The fan is spinning on the power supply, but the ant miner is not powering up. I've replaced the power supply and the ant miner powers up, which means there's a fault on the power supply. Measuring the power supply, I get 0 volts instead of 12 volts. There's nowhere I'm going to troubleshoot this power supply. Everything is covered in white gunk and I can't see a fuse that might need replacement. Placing. Excuse the mess, something smells a bit funny. Four D3s at 1200 watt plus the 2.7 kilowatt GPU rig is just under 32 amps. So the fifth D3 and the L3 plus that I've got have to go on another circuit if I want to prevent a fire. So this circuit is already beyond its limit. Two more parcels have just arrived. The top box is 3.2 kilos. It has a smaller box inside. It's another 2U shelf, same as the last video with a bag of nuts, bolts and 
washers. It's a one use shell. I think in a closed position it's 550mm and it can expand to 800mm. I'm not going to expand it now and I think this is the bottom of the shelf. It's upside down. It's slotted so it can allow air to circulate and it's supposed to handle up to 45 kilos assuming you spread it out evenly. It's a four post shelf which means you can mount it on the front and back of the rack for extra support. I'm just going to power up the D3 with the DPS power supply which is rated at 1000 watts at 240 volts. Let's see what happens. Either I'll break the power supply or the ant miner will run at a lower hash rate. Powered it up, it's going through its boot cycle at 32 watts. Jet engine mode at 100 watts and now it's mining at 1300 watts. So technically I'm overloading the power supply but it is working. On the left we have a solar panel meter. It says 0 watts because it's night time now. And on the right we have the current cost sensor around the electricity meter. It changes between 8.5 to 8.8 .8 kilowatt hours and that's 862 pound a month or 28 29 pound a day in electric costs and that's for powering 5d freeze an l3 and a gpu mining rig this house is normally a low energy consumption with the electric bill being around 10 pound a day so this is quite a lot there's no way that the solar panels can cover the mining cost but it does help to reduce it a little bit this is the electric meter and i'm not sure how frequently that red light is meant to flash i think every 100 watts maybe but that is blinking really fast and i've got my hands on the mains cable and i feel a little bit warm the circuit breaker also feels a little bit warm not too warm though i'll cover the two u shelves in another video when they all arrive i think i'm waiting on another three so the one u shelf is 19 inches wide and 550 mil deep which can expand to 800 mil deep the racks that i'm putting these in is 750 mil and i was told to get an adjustable one just to be on the safe side this shelf was quick delivery i think it was next working day i can't really remember it was 30 pounds with free postage the seller was Linkscom UK. The shelf is one U high. There was something strange with my shelf because this is completely flat at the top but on mine it, it was folded up on one side and folded down on the other. It had these slots for ventilation. It's 1.2 millimeters thick cold rolled steel. This picture is slightly different because the one that I have has had three screws on each bracket but this one only has two screws on each bracket. The max load capacity is 45 kilos and that's UDL loading capacity, which stands for uniformly distributed load, which basically means just spread out evenly. The 5D freeze with power supply were ordered on the 3rd of August with a delivery time between the 15th to the 25th of October. These were dispatched on the 25th and arrived on the 30th. This might be because there was an issue with the order number being placed on the reference. I use an old payee which contained an old reference number from a previous order and that caused some confusion so from now on I create a new payee each time or try to edit it if I can. The reference number was entered in three different places and I didn't change all three. The total cost was $8,841 and this was at a time when the Bitcoin was $2,830 now it's about $7,500. Some people say it's best to buy the Bitcoin but then they're forgetting that past performance does not mean you'll get the same in the future. Bitmain created a shipment on the 24th of October and it was picked up by FedEx on the 25th. It travelled through China and took the usual route through Germany, France, to Stansted and then to me. The maximum delivery time would have been 12pm. This arrived at 11.17am. If you've liked this video and found anything useful, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't done already, please subscribe and click on the bell for more notifications. And could you also like my Facebook page and I'll see you next time.